Okay, I'm I'm talking to Peter Glover via Skype. Now Peter uh, is quite a uh, a well-known member of our community, uh, particularly in Mitchett and Frimley Green. Uh, he's a, a, a frontline paramedic for uh, the ambulance service. Uh, although you're not doing that right now, are you, Peter? You're doing. No, no, no. Uh, I'm working on a project to engage with GPs and build a system called IBIS. Okay, well, we'll talk about that another time. But the reason why the reason why we're talking to Peter today is because he just rang me up to uh, he, to say he just listened to the uh, now quite famous or infamous uh, podcast with Lavinia Seely and uh, about gay marriage. And uh, you you tell me what you, your thoughts are, Peter. I couldn't believe, Paul, that in an age where Technology means we can do this, where our children have any better opportunities than they've ever had in any generation. That when society accepts somebody on the merits of their abilities, not on their race, creed or gender, or their own expressions of politics or faith, that we would have people, public servants, decrying lawmakers for once, catching up where society is. Her whole speech was about how the party hadn't been consulted, how it wasn't in the manifesto, how it's inherently wrong to allow this to happen, and that by some de facto, sometime next week, a man will be able to have three wives. I've got one wife, and that's enough for me. I'm in a loving, stable relationship. That's enough for me. I don't decry anybody else, whether they're male, female, gay or straight, not having the same rights and privileges that I have. You know, they talk about, you know, deselecting Michael Gove. Why don't they deselect him for what he's doing to schools? For the way he's carving up the education system and bringing it in privatize, privatization companies. Why not deselect him for the parliamentary expenses? For once, I agree with him. He's speaking his mind. And on this one small piece of law, the purple-headed retired gay brigade will come out and bash anybody. A vicar to say that this fundamentally undermines Christian teaching. I am a Christian and I understand the Bible to be all about two parts, life before Jesus and life after Jesus. And if Jesus is and accepted the Son of God, he came with two messages, to love one another without reserve and to treat everybody as if you would treat yourself and to love your God with your heart, mind and soul. And we wonder why our churches are empty mausoleums to an age gone by because people don't conform to what the church expects. The church should be at the centre of our community, embracing people for what they have been and what they can do and what they can share and what they can bring. Not because they're gay or straight, black or white. Mm. This is just typical of Surrey Heath arrogance that they feel they can jump on a bandwagon because a small piece of legislation, which is probably going to take one and a half parliamentary days to be pushed through, I would rather they were more concerned about the deep cut development, the infrastructure for Frimley Park, the support of my primary school, which has just had a requires notice. Why aren't they doing things like that instead of banding together over tea and warm biscuits and moaning about what decries, which I accept, and they outside I think is already law. People don't realise that civil partnerships isn't marriage because we think it should be and we already thought it was. You see, can you not, can you not see the argument from some of the people who have been going to church all their lives? Um, but let's take conservatism out of it, okay? You know, these people have been taught in their Sunday schools you know um, the principles of marriage and um, and what it means, and that for centuries and centuries, uh, you know, it's been man and woman. That's what marriage has been about. Do you not do you not see why they're upset about it? No, because it's not about that. The Bible teaches you about love. The Bible teaches you about respect. You know. Now I don't know anything about the Bible because I've never yeah. read it. To be honest with no, you, but is the there Bible. anything in there that says that uh, a man and a man, or a woman and a woman, should not be together? 
No, it 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 it, it does talk about the the fact that men were not designed to be with men, but that was not because of a religious thing. That was because of a bi a biological thing. But we've moved on from that, Paul. You know, the thing about Christianity or the thing about faith is that it should be a living expression of your inward beliefs and that you use scripture as signposts to live your life, not as a narrow descriptive that you can't step outside of. And that's it, where it, I, it, it is quite subjective, isn't it? I mean, you know, it's how s certain people choose to interpret it, I suppose. Well, it's the old adage of, you know, if there was an armed robbery and there were five witnesses, the five witnesses statement would be totally different because they're from different perspectives and you see different things and you hear different sounds. But put together you have a better picture, which is what a church, a collective body of people should be. It's about coming together and excluding them because they want to make an expression of love and commitment to each other. I, I uphold that. I say we should have more of that. Mm. I mean, I yes that. Ye yesterday I spoke to uh, a lovely lady from the Heaverside. Um, Who's got? Who's not overtly political in any way? She's not a card-carrying member of any political party, uh, but she goes to church every Sunday, and is really upset about this. Really upset. And as much as you are, um, you know, in favour of the proposals and uh, in support of Michael Gove on this particular subject, she couldn't be, you know, uh, more opposite. And, well, and, and and no matter what anybody says to her, she just cannot get her head around it. What would you say to somebody like that? I would say this. There is requirement within the bill going through that allows churches not to be forced into it. Ah, so well, she w let me just interrupt you there. Um, that may be the case. But according to Jeffrey Vera, who I uh, interviewed, who was the first person I interviewed on that podcast, and who was on Sky News this morning... Um, said that the, the concern is is that the European um, human rights legislation would force churches churches to do that. What would you say to that? I would say that actually three things. Firstly, this piece of law is catching up with society. I accept and don't see a difference between civil partnership and this proposed extension to civil marriage, same-sex marriage. Secondly, that if her, that lovely lady wants to stay in her church, not engaging with her community, not embracing those people who can benefit and expand and help her church to grow and be more effective in the community, that's fine. But I won't walk through that door. Mm. And they have to realize that, that that process is a dying, dwindling mentality. And finally, finally, we are getting caught up about Michael Grove's personal expression as our MP. You can't hound a man for that. Yes, we can hound him no, about I, I can't, I'll tell you what, I, I couldn't agree with you more there. I mean, one of the reasons why exactly. one of the reasons why I like Michael Gove so much and I support Michael Gove so much, and one of the reasons why I got into local politics is because I was sick and tired of listening to local councillors um, not saying anything actually <laughs> you know they, they they just would not express an opinion about anything because they're frightened of their own shadows um and it's an absolute breath of fresh air to have an mp whether you agree with him or not because there's a lot of stuff i disagree with him on and i've had arguments with him um you know constructive arguments on on various issues um, but one thing you cannot take away from the fella is he's not afraid to express his his, view, his own personal views, and that's what I love about Michael Gove. And you know, to de to threaten to deselect a minister of state because of an expression, I think that's disgraceful. Who, yeah. who do they think they are? I know, who do they think they represent? Because they don't represent me, and they don't represent my friends and colleagues and my children. They are representing hypocrisy. They are demonstrating a thought process of 40 years ago. Mm. Is that what our local politics is all about? I, I mean, I've got to agree with you there. I find it absolutely incredible. I mean, you know, you know me, Peter. I'm 
although I although I'm a councillor with a conservative badge, I am a conservative with a little C, and um, you know I, I've got to say I found I find it absolutely disgusting that just because there's something they disagree with, whether it's fundamentally or or otherwise. Uh, that they're threatening to deselect. I mean, I don't actually think that will happen. I think it's a threat that I we can't carry try. out. I say try, and then what? Another part of scripture will come true. What you do unto others will be done unto you. Mm. I think. Then, they, I think these people. I mean, I've got to say, I've got to say, I think that Jeffrey Vero, who's the president of the Surrey Heath Conservative Association, uh, he was on uh, the Paxman uh, program. Uh, just before Christmas, and he was on Sky News this morning, puts it across a, a, a decent argument, and he does it in a non-offensive way, I personally think. Um, but I think that the way that um, uh, uh, Lavinia Seely put her point across just switches people off to, um, you know, politicians, to be honest with you. I mean, I don't understand how, how, how she's got away with it, uh, expressing views like that for so long. I would say this, though, Paul. That guy who you're talking about, he is the guy that's saying the podcast he can't support this because it wasn't in any coalition manifesto. Hang on. Nor was the reshape and root and branch destruction of the NHS. Nor was the overt capitalisation and, you know, pulling apart of the education system through academies and federations. None of that was in uh, the coalition agreement. And yet there are laws being passed on a regular basis. NHS. I work for the NHS. I love the NHS. I see on a daily basis how the NHS affects and shapes every part of our community. From a new A&E department right through to a new patient transport service as supported by South East Coast Ambulance Service. We need the NHS and they're, they're pulling it apart, giving it to people who are not part of the NHS and who are going to go away now and replicate the very thing that we're pulling apart. Mm. That's not in the manifesto agreement, but to criticise and castigate a man for his personal views. That's we, disgusting. You know, you know, you might as well take Lividia and send her to South Alabama, or take her to Georgia and send her to live with the homophobes in America, because that's what she's saying Surrey Heath is. Mm. That's the way she paints Surrey to me. Mm. No I'm, I'm, and, and there's a lot of chatter on Twitter about her interview. Oh yeah, a lot of twen a lot of chatter. What do you think? Because a, a lot of people are saying, well, you know, the chairman of the council shouldn't be expressing views like that. Um, what do you think should happen as a result of that? To to Lavinia Seely. I would not like to say, but ultimately she is held before the electorate, and let her go on record to friends of mine who are in a same-sex relationship who are adopting children and say, I don't believe you should have the same equality as me. Let her go to Collingwood, where they're doing fantastic work helping children, you know, young adults to come out and express, you know, the feelings of, you know, same-sex relationship and help them support our kids and say that's not legitimised. Well, this, I mean, the other thing as well is, I mean, you make that point. Sorry, County Council, of which Lavinia Seely is the chair, um, are the legally uh, statutory body responsible for adoption of children. Exactly. Exactly. You know, um, take that how you like. Well, you know, whatever we say, children are naturally and most, ben are best in a normal home environment with loving two adults who can support them and bring diametric views and bring broad spectrums of understanding and help them grow. They shouldn't be in institutions or with foster families. And she's basically saying that we don't value same-sex foster parents, or we don't value same-sex doctors, or we're not going to allow same-sex teachers or nurses to have the same equal right as a fat bloke and a beautiful wife. Because I think, you know, this, it is, much to do about nothing because if you talk to the people out there they think it's already law i know but the uh, men uh, in the registry office getting married they think they're married they don't I, realize I, I i agree with that but I, I agree with that but i think that what people don't understand 
and this is something I was trying to explain to my dad yesterday. Um, what people don't understand is on this particular issue, um, the MPs who are going to vote on this and apparently going to get a free vote on Tuesday aren't really, although they are responsible to the people who vote for them, on this particular issue, actually it's the card-carrying members, the people who pay their membership fees every year and, and the, the ones who select their MPs are the ones that hold all the power here because that's what Lavinia Seeley was saying we're going to deselect Michael Gove or we you know we don't trust Michael Gove anymore so they're the ones that the, the MPs are, are beholden to on this particular issue but Paul why is that whether you're Labour Conservative or Lib Dem numbers across the board of card carrying fully paid members is dwindling and dying as we speak mm, that's parties have to be externally reflective of the way they think and actually the needs of the nation outweigh the needs of a party they're there to represent us they can't pass a law as a conservative they can't build an NHS as a Labour they build it for the sake of the society the communities and the nation as we are and to for some small-minded arrogant middle-class snob to think that she can dictate to a Secretary of State how to vote on an issue which is a free vote says to me that she thinks she has more rights than me because I don't pay or she thinks she has more rights than me because I'm gay or whatever. There we have bigot arrogance clearly on display on your podcast. Peter Glover, thank you very much. Cheers, Diddy.